Hello YouTube, hello friends and people in virtual world, welcome back to Baggies TMD uh, and welcome to the National Railway Museum in York. So we've just come up to uh, York for the day, take a look at some of the trains here. It's rather busy in here today so I don't actually know how much video footage I'm going to get. But here we have Evening Star, uh, Class 9F uh, steam engine, uh, I believe it's a 2, what is it, let's have a look. <laughs> It's a 210. Um, Evening Star was the last ever steam loco built um, by BR. So built in Swindon in uh, 1960. Uh, a slightly nice note is the last 66 to be built, uh, run by GBRF. It's also called Evening Star, painted in exactly the same scheme as the 9F, same line and everything. It was named on the turntable facing the 9F and GBRF have already said that when it uh, retires at the end of its working life it's been donated to uh, the National Railway Museum so it can sit next to uh, its namesake. I would say uh, both uh, the 9F and the 66 are uh, heavy freight locos. Quite interesting to know what I'll actually pull more if it be the evening the uh, steam loco 9F or the uh, diesel 66. But yeah, I'd say we'll have a quick wander around today, take some take as much video as we can. Of what's going on here? Last night's really busy today, so okay. I get slightly self-conscious when I start talking to myself. Yeah, there's an INF. Just got the Q1 over there as well. Replica of the rocket. Let's go for a potter up this way. Hopefully we can get up the steps in a minute. Let's actually, take a look inside the uh, an INF. It's a very large vehicle. I think the driving wheels are about five foot, something like that. Looking at it because it's straight through. It's quite nice. Here we've got Merchant Navy class, this one's been uh, had the side taken out of it so you can see what's going on inside. I think the uh, Merchant Navy class, what's the Elmer's, Elmer's line this one. Driving wheels are about six foot, I'm six two and they're just almost as tall as me so have a quick wander around. Everyone keeps looking at me weird because I'm talking to a camera but yeah, oh well. <laughs> So I'll say, they're taking the side out of this, you can sort of see all what's going on inside with all the steam tubes and and all that. Obviously the blue is where the, the um, hot air goes through from the uh, boiler. Obviously all around there in the cylinder jackets where the uh, water is that creates the steam to uh, turn the cylinders. Uh, obviously we're with Casey today. Say hello Casey. Here we've got the tender here. So obviously the white section is where all the coal went in and uh, the blue section's where all the water went in. Quite interesting little thing. A little float there. It's a bit like a ball valve in the toilet. So that moves up, pulls on all these arms. It tells the driver how much water is going to stand up. So yeah, like I say, we'll take a wander around and take some videos. So we have Furnace Railway, number three loco, Copper Knob. What a brilliant name for a loco, copper knob. <laughs> a three-year-old in me wants to laugh so much. Yeah, just out here, we've got a winding engine just here as well. Obviously a replica of uh, Stevenson's rocket. Uh, National Railway Museum, we've got a couple of these. We've got a replica that sits in here. Uh, they've also got one that can um, fire up and down on a little line they've got. Going around the back. Uh, let's put you over the window to see if there's anything interesting outside. No. <laughs> You never know, sometimes they have a, last time I've done that, they got a uh, Class 47, uh, Prince Henry, uh, one of the old uh, EWS 47's Royal Train uh, locomotives before, ooh, some Trans Pennine stuff quickly going past in the new Trans Pennine livery. I'll have a quick shot of that there for you. Yeah, we'll go to the Q1 in a minute. It'll be very scatty this, you can be here, there and everywhere. So yeah, Stevenson's Rocket, obviously first class there. Swim class there. Yeah, I'm going to be in everyone's pictures today. It's going to be quite fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, one two five here. Uh, uh, one two seven five. I don't quite know what loco this one is, but anyway, we'll get to the Q ones. I like Q ones. The ugly duckling of locomotives. Uh, Made by the Southern during the war years. A very aust austerity loco. No splashes or anything. It's built. It was built when there weren't a fat lot of metal around, so it's very utilitarian. 
no airs, no grace, he's just a loco when you pull stuff. Obviously it's a 060. Uh, when it was built it was the most powerful 060 tender loco. Uh, mate, I think actually it still is. Yeah, it's very... I'd say it's an ugly duckling of the train world, but I like the look of it. I've got, I've got one. I've got one in BR Black. I just like the look of them, they look funky to me. They do. Yeah, you see the front of the rocket there. Uh, I've lost the other half again, but oh well. I'll say there's a front of the Q1, I'll say very, very minimalist. Okay. Yeah, sorry if there's a bit of lens flare, guys. It, it's a bit of a shitty day, really. It's like sunny, cloudy, rainy, snowy, probably. Yeah, Q1, 942, these are built. A little bit of information here on the board for you. Like I say, they're a, I say they're an ugly bastard. They are, but I quite like them. So we've got a quick uh, peek up there into the uh, drivers area. I see coal come from the back. It's a good thing about having this little gorilla pod. I can put it in places where you wouldn't be able to normally get this camera. Also got a lot of name plates here. Uh, the uh, NMR as well, Talisman, Royal Scar, Ark Royal from the warship. Ark Royal, hmm. Sure, that's at, uh, I'm on the preserve lines. Uh, the mountain. Yeah, lots of different main plates. Lowe's up there as well. I'll take a look at them in a minute. Got the ambulance train here as well. Still, I'm hunting for an Azuma. I'm hoping that, ah, oh no, I thought I was an Azuma then, but uh, you see the back end of a class 91. Getting out with the Mark 5, uh, Mark 4, sorry. Obviously LNER livery, because stagecoach and Virgin cocked up. There's no more of the government have to bail it out, which probably please Corbyn, she wants to nationalise everything again. <laughs> so yeah, I say we'll keep going for a pot around and have a look what we can find. So here we've got a dandy car from about 1845. Uh, obviously before steam locos, uh, the main horsepower was a horse. Uh, these were, oh, horses used to pull the coal trains at the coal mine, so um, these used to pull them up the hill, the horses did, and then when they was going back down, they'd stick them in a, stand them in a dandy cart, and the dandy cart would just roll down for gravity, so saving horses. Uh, energy, I couldn't think what I was going to say there. <laughs> yeah, you'll notice that a lot in my videos, I'll get a bit tongue tied. Let's take a wonder over here at the northeastern Aerolite. Uh, what's that? No, 044. Oh, by the looks of it. Northeastern Railway, pre built Gay Said Works. Quick look inside. Down the rock, yeah, Aerolite is built. Built in about 1869. That one was Northeastern Railway. Oh, fucking loco. narrow gauge coaches here in uh, free preserved uh, state. That's quite nice actually. I like seeing some of the older stuff. And here we've got some of the uh, Channel Tunnel spoil wagons. So obviously when the Channel Tunnel was being built between uh, France and England, uh, these were on the line taking all the uh, excess material uh, to either side to dump. 
and so these have done some work obviously they had a small railway in there and some overhead wire so they used to run these along it construction locomotive and muck truck so yeah 1989 it's quite scary to think that um channel tunnel has been open since like nine was it 94 it opened I'll put a look at the information there yeah nice little uh nice little uh, truck these are and here we've got some uh, post office train mail rail this is how they used to use it you have the tube and then there was always a second tube the post office tube uh, if ever you're in london uh, you can actually go and go on mail rail you can actually they've converted a couple of these coaches over so you can so i'll quick zoom in there so you can have a ride around the uh, mail rail uh, site it's well worth it i think it's about 15 20 quid you have to pre-book but it is well worth it a go on mail rail it's got an lms 2500 here for p so a uh, passenger loco i believe have a quick look in here but yeah i'll say mail rails are well worth it i'll say we've we've done it me and the other half uh, it's quite quite interesting yeah it's very small very small coach here. obviously you've just saw how big that coach is and that's basically what you were sitting yeah, it's built in Derby, this is so be uh, where Bombardier is nowadays. I can see some more because it was fun. Look at that. Here we've got a Southern EMU here, electrical multiple unit. And the Flying Banana, Great Western Rail Car. So, yep, these are uh, supposed to have an overhead, so these used to pick up from the third rail. All sub electric. I think Hornby or Batman have done one of these. Sort of quick. Read the notes and have a quick look up the steps here in this one. Sorry if it's a bit scatty what we're doing today, but I'll say there's a lot of people, so I'm trying not to get in people's way while I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah quite nice to be up here as well as the uh, GWR rail car. It's very uh, comfy in there, I will admit. Yeah, it does. All third class this is, so even third class isn't too bad. Yeah, all third class, I'd say, just run on the southern. I used to pick up electric from third rails. It still does actually down south. A lot of third rail stuff down south. Uh, 450s, uh, uh, third rail. Obviously, the 450 and the 350 are the same one, just as a pantograph one doesn't. So I like getting people shots at you. Oh, hello. You see me in the uh, see me in the reflection. I'll see on the new camcorder still. The old Gorilla Pod. So I hope you find finding the sound quality is a bit better in these uh, videos now we're doing. Still to the Q1, I still like the Q1. Let's put her up here, 10,000, uh, 1,008. Uh, tank locative, 1889. Look at the, uh, the bump on that. Yeah, oh there's uh, the ELMS. I can't remember if I've done this one or not, but if we didn't, there we go, just have to pause it to read all the info. And then we quick look. I like this because we can get a good look inside. So the logo's a bit high. Here's some squeaking outside. Here's a nice little steam loco. Little foundry loco. Like a little toy, isn't it, that one? Yeah, it's good fun with the form of the other half disappeared, so it always leaves me wandering around. <laughs> I'm in my element, this train. Got a Chinese loco over there. Have a look at that in a minute. We've obviously got Mallard with the uh, LMS. Uh, sorry, no, not LMS. That goes on the LMS train, sorry. We'll take a look down the pit in a minute. We will, oh, we can have a look inside as well of the uh, GWR rail car. It's quite nice. We'll have a look at that now. Water steps and have a look. Got Great Western 4003. Oh, load start. Uh, built in about 1907. Another info panel on it here. Yeah. 
What's that one? Four. Four six zero. There's a rail car number four, but nine thirty four. Great Westerns were very in a, in in. Oh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but yeah, they've, they've done a lot of weird stuff quicker than anyone else. Can't think of the word I'm looking for. I oh, know it's in my head, but it won't come out. <laughs> yeah, it looks quite comfy there actually. Yeah, it does. See on the roof. So I'm looking to polish the lip, clean the roof. <laughs> There's only cobwebs up there, folks. Oh, there we go. Nice uh, lot there of a uh, Western. Celtic in the 37s, just zoom you in a little bit, just have a look over there, there you go, so you've got Western in blue, uh, Deltic, uh, I used to run my main line, that did, and you got a 37, first 2,000 horsepower diesel locomotive, and try not to fall down the steps as we go back down. Ooh. Small loco here, Bork site, I think this is a shunter, not too sure. We'll have a look. 1874. We'll have a look. So, oh, hot dog, that's an industrial OK box, so it was. And we've got a small little uh, Festini Arc Loco here. Okay. Right. Have a quick look under here. We'll get the other side and have a quick look. Obviously, we've got Mallard just there as well. Uh, I don't think there's anything inside Mallard. That's why it's not on the main line anymore. Oh, look, I found a girlfriend again. She's there. Uh, oh, she's got a camera. She's happy now. She found a camera. She thought she'd lost a camera, but it was in the first place that she'd looked, but she'd missed it. She had. Oh, I'm getting scolded. I'm, I'm going to get shot when I get home. <laughs> so yeah, we'll take a wonder under load star stick and uh, I've just got to kick up the arse for that as well. Thanks, dear. <laughs> have a quick look under load star. Oh, I'm sorry, going to get murdered on the way. It's a good job I'm driving on the way home, isn't it? I just see a class 20 over there as well. Um, hopefully, we'll be here as well for the uh, turntable to move around. This is the site of the original. Uh, Roundhouse here at York, obviously the building's new. It is, but it's the original site. And uh, he actually moved his turntable around during the day. Got a quick look under Lodestar. And we can see the inner workings of our steam loco works. We can. Yeah. Also, you got your front pony here. Here's his inner cylinders. Just up there, all your brake lever in here, all the pipes. You think how many tons are actually above you, it's quite scary. Let's go into the tender now. There you go, here's where the old tender is. Oh, look, that's a good pie. <laughs> I believe that's the water scoop, that is. So, when it was on the long journeys, we used to have troughs in the railway. You should drop that, instead of having to stop, it could uh, refill at speed. Also, I'd say there'd be water troughs in the middle of the track and it could pick up from there. So I'd say it having to stop and uh, pick up water to fill itself up. Right. It's a really long bit of the video, this is. We're pretty much going to get everything in, so we're just wandering around aimlessly. We've probably said the same train, trains about 10 times, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I say, can you see the water scoop a bit there now? Whoa. Just zoom you in there, so yeah, that would uh, hinge down and it take on water while on the move. Floyd Scotland was famous for it, that's why he had a second tender, had a cold tender and a water tender. I think that was one of the first locos to actually use the uh, water troughs to fill up on the move. It did. So just at the back of the Mallard at the moment, with uh, the dynamometer car that was on it, with that fight, fateful, oh, pardon me, mid hiccup then, it's fateful uh, speed run. It's all the dynamometer equipment that's telling how quick it went, so a quick uh, eyes up here. Yeah, this was the, uh, obviously Mallard's famous for breaking the uh, steam speed record that still stands to, uh, 
So this day. Yours. 126 miles an hour, 1938. Obviously a Nigel Gresley design. It is LNER, London North Eastern, so run on the East Coast main line. There's like Duchess of Southern as an MS, LNS, London Midlands, Scotland, just run through the Midlands. See inside, you're gonna see my ugly mug in the reflection. So I'd like say this was all testing its speed and seeing how quick it was going. Obviously port lights on the top as well. Oh, So probably with the flying scot from one of the most famous locos in the world, Malar. Full streamliner. Bit with 1938 at Doncaster. That's, that's more my area, diesels and steams. I'm not, I like steamers, but I'm more of a diesel fan personally. Hopefully we can get in the sheds as well today. Last time I come, we couldn't actually get into the sheds. So yeah, there we go. That is the front of... Oh, I forgot we've got a Eurostar in here now as well. There's the front of Mallard. Yeah. Full streamlined. It's a shell though, there's, no, there's nothing inside it. It's all a big party truck, I think. I don't think there's anything inside it, boiler-wise. Or else it'd be out on the main line. I would say Bitten's out, but even that's stored at the moment. We've got uh, Dominican and New Zealand out at the moment. Which we, uh, no, Union South Africa, sorry, which we had caught a video the other week coming through uh, Aberston, which is on the channel. There's its uh, plaque. Have a quick pop upstairs. Inside Mallard's uh, not cockpit, I think one thing called, called it. Um, oh, I can't think what this area is called now. I've actually driven the steam like on the Seven Valley. I have had it for my uh, 21st birthday, had a driving experience, done some calling, and actually drift the loco. Try not to uh, smack anyone with me back. Typical tourist, I have a bag on my back. An old uh, footbridge there, something about the uh, white flare. Yeah. Right, while we're near the diesels, let's have a look at them. So we've got a D200. Uh, I'm on mistake, I thought this was a 37, it's actually a class 40, I think. <laughs> it is. It's got four wheels this end, I think it's actually class 40. I um, do apologise about that, I thought it was a 37. They look the same, they've got big bodies on the front of them. I can definitely tell you that's a Delta though. With a pair of marine Napier engines in it. And they sound sweet when they're going. So, go on YouTube and have a listen to a Delta. Uh, that would be from Birmingham Airport, I believe. One of the pods that go between the airport and um, uh, the train station, I can't get my words out there. And we've got a Western here, which is a diesel hydraulic. Most of, most, most of the locos, not these are diesel electrics, this was diesel hydraulic. Use hydraulics then to spin the wheels. We do quite like the, oh, slightly wonky there, I do apologise. They look quite nice, the uh, Westerns and the warships. But uh, we'll come back into here in a minute. Just have a quick look through the Northern Shed, which is like all their. Uh, archive stuff that they've got in the uh, museum. I'll save all lots of it as well, we can actually get upstairs to uh, the engine shed, so hopefully they got something in last time I was in, they'd... Uh... God, they got in now, so Nigel Gresley was in bits. I'll say just stracks and racks of random stuff, including boats, trophies, lots of models. Just their main archives, got some models in here as well. Quite nice. Yeah, just like their stores of random stuff. They've got some prototype locos in there as well. Got the models for prototype locos. 
Yeah, I'll see if we can follow them as well. Keep going, one kill on the camera. I do apologize. Yeah. So we've got an image of the Channel Tunnel link. Uh, I was hoping we were going on that in um, October. Over to uh, Disneyland Paris. <laughs> we will. Now we've got the new Kent Main Line. Yeah, I don't know what mate like that is, M M35. Also, oh, M20, sorry. Brands out. I don't know if I actually got built. <laughs> these some of the pre these are some of the locos I'm on about. Bits of random bits of loco. It's a lot of looks gonna look like. In a city coach, I think it's Mark 4 or Mark 5. Uh, Mark 4 hang up wrap around the uh, doors. Lots of signage. Lots of bits and bobs. I've probably got some models down this way as well. Various different tools, track profiles. It's rammed in here with bits and bobs. I say, well worth the trip. It's, it's free to empty, £10 to park on the car park. If it's free to empty, you just want a donation. They do. These are all actually handmade as well. There's a Guinness World Record for the most locos built by one person. All steamers though, no diesels. Bit of a shame, we've got diesels. Oh, there's an awesome underground sign up there as well. There is zooming on the old uh, underground sign there. That's quite nice. Obviously not the uh, standard font that you get for the underground. That's quite nice. I just realised I've zoomed far too fast there. Uh, random chair. More chairs, bits and bobs, more blocos. Lots and lots and lots and lots of blocos. Here we've got some uh, fine fine cutlery that used to be on some of the locos. Nameplates, print your own nameplate, that's quite cool. Print your own metal nameplate. If I'm going to do that now, that'd be quite cool. We've got a Bobo locomotive. Oh, sorry if I keep going out of shot, I'm going to be quiet. I'm trying not to be too loud. There's a lot of people. I feel like you're a bit self conscious. <laughs> oh, that's not nice there. Oh, how can you train squeaking by? Let's have a look what they've got outside today. Oh, the fat, what by the looks of it. Network South East store wagon. Got a crane there, that's about it. So last time they had some. Uh, Plus 47 outside. Whoop. Falling down the stairs. So yeah, this is where the Fire Scotland's been parked for a bit. There's Henry. A quick look at the evolution of uh, the East Coast main line. So you've got a 4417 Scotsman, Golden Arrow, Deltic, you've got Mallard, HST, and uh, 225 plus uh, 91. I'm hoping to steer this Azuma today. I say, obviously, the workshops are open, so we'll be able to uh, get outside on the balcony, watch the trains coming in out of York, uh, York Station. And you see it's just over there, zooming in, that's the East Coast Main Line going out of uh, York just over there. Another thing, we've got Henry Oakley, which is, have a quick look underneath, is a 442. 
Design Loco. So, it's 442. You've got four wheels on the front, two either side. Two driving wheels, so four, so four, four. And then you got one either side, two trading wheels, so that makes it a 442. Took me years to remember that. <laughs> it did. We've got a model of the uh, LNER's Teaks. It used to go behind Scott Spoon and uh, Compartment. The most model of Scotsman. Shame there's so many idiots about when it's out on the line trying to take pictures of it actually on the main line. Instead of being sensible, we keep thinking it's not 1940 again when everything was fairly safe. A little bit about all the owners of uh, Scotsman down there and who've copped it up in the past. I oh, got nothing in the shed there either. And here we got one of the longest train station name in the world. If you can say this, it's in Wales, if you can say that, you are a genius. I can say the goch or goch bit at the bottom end, and that's about it. Was it Lanfair, Piwigwin, Gooly, Gooly, Chewy, Rundi, Robby, Willy, Yamanti, Silo, Go, 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 there you go. Something like, something like that. I've probably butchered it. If there's anyone who actually can say that and I've just butchered it, I do apologise. <laughs> Zoom me back out again. There we go. Uh, slum class, third class coaches. And we've got some nice costumes. We've got the dining coaches here to that. Quite nice, isn't it? Could do with a sandwich actually myself. Man, I'm stopping a bit for a quick sandwich. <laughs> it's making me a little bit hungry. So yeah, like I say, this is just their area where they store all their uh, artifacts. Got a nice little uh, got North Stafford, North Stafford Railroad. Nice little. I mean, it's like a little diesel, shouldn't they? Like ah, they got some uh, other random stuff that now has flying scarf. There's a lot of crap that's. <laughs> the sound's got the, the name on it. There it is. Um, yet more name badges. And what's this way? Let's go and have a look. Probably get told off, but still. There's no barrier saying we can't come this way, so. We'll see you. A door. <laughs> I thought it was a sneaky little bit that I'd never seen before. You never know, do you? You have to have a quick wander around, don't you? So yeah, I've got a load. Not a Curdworth. Oh, Cudworth, either. Well, oh, it's a Curdworth. I've got an English electric motor works, obviously pick standard engine. Obviously then onto a flywheel that uh, turns the generator. A little bit of a time and we're metro here. A lot of stuff. Uh, what's that, Mark 5? I don't know, Mark 6. It's like Mark 6 coach. I don't know, Mark 4, no, it is a Mark 4. I'm talking drivel again, folks. I was talking drivel. Tiny weird metro, biker. Remember biker growth? As a kid, watching that with Anton Deck, BJ and Duncan. Show my age now, but then I'll. <laughs> another model here. So there's so much stuff in there. It, it is really worth a day out to uh, the National Railway Museum. We've got a tram cart up here, it's a little cart. Boats, keep the girlfriend up with some boats. Oh, we've got a C-Link, Duke of Argyle, and BR used to own a couple of uh, trains as well. Old uh, Till, is that Birmingham New Street? I could possibly be used in actually, what's that? Got nothing. That's it, Man Manchester Piccadilly, that is. 
got a very small label there, I'll have to go down and have a look at. And then proceeded to get in everyone's way. More prototypes, more loco. And we've got some model railways. <laughs> There's everything in here. It's ridiculous. Is there anything in here interesting today? Oh, some panelling. I'm going to be doing some conservation work on some. Oh, sorry, Mom. The camera works crap today. We're all over the place. What's this here? This could be better. Ah, this looks like. Yeah, yeah. Birmingham International. So, we've got the uh, monorail or maglev that comes from Birmingham Airport. It's actually, you don't change that much, and then you go down that walkway there. That takes you to the uh, NEC. Here's another boat. Like I say, there's that much stuff in here, it's unbelievable. Uh, oh, don't tell me the engine shed's closed today. Why are it not? I'm hoping it's just the lift that's closed. It looks open to me up there. It does. I'm hoping it's uh, just that that's closed. Oh no, it's just the lift that's closed. We can get upstairs to the engine shed. There's like so much stuff in here. Is it up here as well? See how it is. It tells you how signalling works. Oh, there's a prototype of the prototype model of the Class 60. You can see it hasn't actually changed that much from the prototype of the Class 60. But yeah, this is a. Uh, shows how to uh, use signalling. This bit does. You have to run every so often. I think this is Houston. I don't remember if it serves me correctly. Yeah, that's Houston. Uh, I don't remember if it serves me correctly. That building there is now a travel lodge. <laughs> so I've stopped in it a few times there. So yeah, so much stuff in there. There is even more loco badges and nameplates. Right, let's go and have a quick look up in the uh, engine shed. Uh, I just got to go and find the other half again because I've lost her. I've just potted off as normal. <laughs> she won't be far away. This is about pretty much. We're just in the restoration shed here at the uh, uh, NMR. Uh, we've got some Nigel Grizzly. Uh, same class as Mallard. You can see it's tender over the back there. We've got a 37. Obviously, it's Nigel Grizzly. Running frames there. Took the borders off. A little bit more work done on it uh, than last time. You can just see down there as well. We've got the other replica rocket coaches. So, yeah. Just inside. This is obviously where uh, well, they attempted to rebuild. Flying Scotsman, not quite sure what's over the back. It's interesting, whatever it is, probably a tender bottle looks a bit at the back. Yes, yeah, Nigel goes there, just being uh, 
Or we're still, I think that's a 31 down the bottom there. Obviously all the machinery to do all the restoration work. Just been having a look at the trains out, so I saw the uh, Fallen, that's 91 on the Edinburgh train. So yeah, a little look in there in the uh, engine shed here at the uh, NMR. I don't know. NRF even. So here we have the Duchess of Hamilton. So you've got um, Ballard, which is the LNER streamliner. Duchess of Hamilton was the LMS. So LNER was um, East Coast. LMS was West Coast. Uh, can't really get a decent shot of it today, actually. It's a bit uh, covered up by everything else. But yeah, there's the uh, Duchess of Hamilton. Same as the Duchess of Sutherland. Obviously, uh, Duchess of Sutherland had all its uh, streamlining taken off it a few years ago so Duchess of Sutherland, Duchess of Hamilton, same class of loco but uh, yeah that was uh, I'd say you can see the LMS's version to compare to the LNER's version so I'll click like on the other side because everyone's taking pictures I'll say it's really really busy today there it is so, yeah there we go so there's LMS streamlining there's LNER's version streamlining we just sit back, he's got his own carriages all painted up in the maroon. Uh, we've got some locos over there, but I think we're going to go underneath now to the other shed. Have a quick look under there, you can just see a woodhead uh, electric. We've got uh, one of the Euro Stars, these are all being scrapped now, the Euro Stars, the original. I'm here, Dave. <laughs> the original Euro Star trying to get a Pullman there, so he passed. But yeah, all these are slowly being scrapped, they're all being taken up to e EMR in Kingsbury. These are uh, the Clash 373 Euro stars. 96, these were introduced. A little bit of uh, information. 208 miles an hour. I'd say, uh, I don't know if we're travelling one of these or one of the uh, new Attachees. I think they're Attachees or Siemens trains. And you've got uh, some models here. Oh, we've got to have a quick look at the models. A bit of a quick uh, look at what they get in the shop while we're here. It's expensive, but we've got some nice trains. Let's you know, have a look at the models they've got. So we've got some Deltics here. Oh, there's a GBRF 66. Oh. Only one I'm really interested in, and that's going to be that one. 155 pounds, not too bad. That's not too bad in here, actually. I thought they were going to be a bit more uh, expensive than what they are, but we paid 106, 150 yesterday for that new Class 90. The MPV down there as well. We've got, we've got one of them for the collection. Uh, Rouse's Sheffield limited edition stuff. We got the uh, multi-purpose vehicle, but yeah, I say uh, a few bits and bobs in here, some special edition stuff. It's all quite nice. Lots of Mallard stuff. Just finding something for my little cousin. She'd like, she'd like that little wooden train. It's not not bad priced. It's not. I say we'll have a quick. Uh, oh. <laughs> Let's go to the Eurostar, we got a little bit distracted. Last night, these are being towed into EMR in Kingsbury, so if you're, if you're lucky enough to see one of these go in, you're doing well. Yeah. Hold a second. So, we've got, we've got to have our picture taken, so we'll, we'll video while we're having got our picture taken. There we go, we've got the picture taken. <laughs> ah, there's the uh, front of the uh, new Azuma. So these are what's taking over the, uh, they're just taking over the HST on the GWR. They're also on the, um, oh, West, um, East Coast Main Line now. These front of the Zoomers originally they used to have a HST version of it, which is just over there. And now they've, they've done an Azuma version. Obviously there we've got a uh, mock-up of the Eurostar going through the Channel Tunnel. So that is what, when you're traveling on the Channel Tunnel, that's what it looks like. Here it is, it is a big tunnel. We've also got, it's a bullet train. The only Japanese bullet train outside of Japan. This one got donated a few years ago by the Japanese uh, train museum. I believe, I believe this was built in the same year 
is what the Duchess of Hamilton was built. I'm not too sure on that fact, but I think it is right. I'll, we can get you can go inside that. We'll take a look on there later on. But I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's the same age. But obviously uh, the Eurostar uh, has gone up on the East Coast Main Line when it was a uh, GNER. Oh, many many years ago, first privatisation. Oh, hold on, I need to check my wallet. Oh. You have to look in my wallet. I don't know if I've got a pound coin. If not, just go to the box set now, pop it for the shop. So like they've got uh, one of the old coin things here. So you can have one of the different coin types. So we've got once one of them. But yeah, let me say, what's on about now? I, I completely forgot I got a solid Yeah, these have run up the uh, East Coast Main Line. I've only got a pound. That's good. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We've got some second-hand books here, so look what second-hand books we've got. See so if there's anything modern image. No, but uh, yeah, let's say. There's a few more trains to look at over here, but so all the girlfriends things you can get a pound. There's some nice, uh, nice key rings in here as well. Almost cost me a lot of the fire cost me, obviously, because it's it's the people's uh, People's Train, is it? The Fine Scotsman is where it was restored here. It's part of the National Collection now. After Branson put a crap load of money towards it. So this is EM1, number 26020. Built in the 1950s. I say this used to run on the uh, Sheffield to Manchester line. I believe it was the Woodhead, Woodhead Viaduct or something like that. Yeah, it's one of the first electric overheads made by Vickers uh, in the country. Yeah, that's how we're going to go over to the other shed now, which is the original part of the museum. Obviously made in brush, brush traction, these are. Um, these were made in Birmingham. Uh, I go to a local train club, and one of the members there used to work on these when they were being built uh, back in the late, 90, uh, late 90s, late 80s. So I'll see you over on the other side, folks. Right, we've come on the road now. We're now in the station hall. Uh, this used to be the old part of the, the old museum. So when I first started coming up here, this was the National Railway Museum. A lot of royal trains in this section and royal carriages. But we'll take it from, part of three, I'll say, still very busy here. Very busy. So hopefully we'll get some uh, good videos for you. A lot of old uh, railway signage in this one again. Yeah. We'll look, potter up and down and take a look at all the trains. Got old kiosk here. Now the old station kiosk. I'd say it's all laid out like platforms this is. We'll go for a potter up. So you got raw trains from different areas along here. And Gladstone is, I think it's Queen Victoria's Royal Train if my memory serves me correctly. Yeah, it's, not, it's quite interesting to see even the newer compared to the old trains, the, the innards are still the same. Same principles, just more pipe work. It's like going into someone's house and looking at the central heating system. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Just see inside this royal train here. That's I'm pretty sure this is Queen Victoria's royal train. See inside here. I think we've got some Mark II's in here as well. Got some Mark II's. A bit of opulence in there, eh? It's quite nice, isn't it? Obviously that one with a sleeping car. Yeah, so yeah, it is Queen Victoria's Saloon. Get a bit of information on here. Next week we've got uh, Queen Adelaide Saloon. A little bit smaller. There's the size of Queen Adelaide's, uh, and there's Queen Victoria's. Somewhat of a difference. And I believe this is a Mark II here. It looks like a Mark II. Yeah, it does. We'll find the info. So I'm trying not to get in everyone's pictures. Pretty sure this is a Mark II. I can't remember where the info board is on this. You just see the old heaters in there. 
different styles compared to the older ones. You still see me in the window. Hello. <laughs> Bed there, the corridor. So I'm pretty sure this is an R2. It says here on the older info panel. Ah, yeah, Queen Elizabeth Saloon. So, yeah, it is. This was the Queen's, yeah, Queen Elizabeth II, before she had a set of Mark III's made for herself. We've got Queen Mary's Saloon just here as well. So, a lot of royal trains in this section. So at one point this one and that one have been together. And so it's all Mark 3s now with Paramount 2s. I've got um uh, 67 Queen's Messenger I believe, a limited edition one. I wouldn't mind doing a full rake of Mark 3s. I've got a couple I've got a couple that all been brought out, but I need to do a full rake of Royal Coaches. It looked quite uh, quite nice I think. Yeah. So say lots of some raw trains. One down there, we'll take a look at that one in a minute. Oh, go for a part of back around this way. So, look, all geared up to be like a platform, this one is. And it's like one of the old, uh, old engine sheds there. Let's photo bomb this one. Oh no, she got the picture before we, we could get into photo bomb it. So, we've got a few of the post office cars down here as well. All the nice sil silverware. Oh, pardon me. I'm stabbing doing this. I've got the cups now. <laughs> All the nice silverware. In there, ready for uh, PT. Uh, Lennonsies. And Charlesies and Monsies and Toonsies. Yeah. I say, you got some of the uh, older first and third classes here. Let's have a look at the difference between first and third in these older coaches. Travelling post office, I think we can go inside that, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So there's third class. Don't look very comfy seating at all. And you've got the big leather seats for first class. So you can see a lot of me in this because it's very reflective, <laughs> reflective in here, so you can see a lot of my ugly mug. <laughs> I say, if you join these, uh, don't forget to subscribe to uh, Baggies TMD. Uh, get some more uh, of these vlogs out. We're doing some more work on the uh, railways at the moment as well, as opposed to just the airfix kits. We are. Uh, even the uh, restaurants made out built little uh, seating on the carriage. It's quite nice. These ones can be turned into uh, beds. These carriages can. Third class sleep in the dining carriage. You just have to pause if you want to have a quick look at all the notes that are around. Just looking at everyone eating, that's actually quite nice. It's like fish and chips and burger and chips. It looks very nice actually. <laughs> it does. Prices, yeah. Prices are a bit expensive for food in here, but it is a museum, so just do what we do. We brought our own picnic, some sandwiches with us. I'm um, hoping to get back in a bit so we can uh, see the turntable move. And it's half, half three it moves, so... Right. Spinner. I think you can get on this one as well. It doesn't dusty very often by the looks of it though. Yeah, it can. I'll say we've driven one of these, well not this one exactly, but we've driven a, a small um, 06, no it was a 260 tender loco at Seven Valley. You can see all the running gear inside there, the inside cylinders and all that. More uh, the old tin signs, Fryco, Brook Bonds, if you want a cup of tea, Lipton's tea, Julian's tobacconists. There you got your uh, platform tickets, if you just wanted to go on the platform do a bit of train spotting and get some numbers. More uh, carriages this side as well, they're everywhere. <laughs> Smaller loco this is. What's that? Uh, an 044, 
by the looks of the uh, wheel arrangement. Quick look inside. See in there. It's dark. It's dark. So it's a bit dark in this one. This is the original shed from many moons ago. And the first item, so looking third class there again. Seats look a bit comfy on this one. And you've even got a little privy. You have to share it with next door, I don't know. Oh no, let's get through that door. Oh, it looks like everyone's got a little uh, toilet there. The first are uh, a bit more comfier and probably got a bigger, bu bigger bog. <laughs> oh, but. Yeah, so there's your toilet for first. Second's toilet looks a bit better than thirds. You can tell I'm a plumber and a gas man at heart from looking at the toilets. And you got the luggage area where the guard used to stand in here. You got all the bicycle tyre there. The insulated fish van, so he's used to be insulated. So uh, the fish could get where it was going fresh on ice. And here we got a toilet, a little uh, urinal for gentlemen. Yeah, we've got one of these. Uh, I've still got a few of these floating around in, bro. Can't use them. Yeah, used to have a little piss in there. I'll say there's one in uh, the jewellery quarter. There is. I'll say a little uh, pisser for the blokes to win up a quick slashing. <laughs> it's got a fruit van there. I'll say you've got Insta van, fruit van. And I've got a small passenger brake van. These are from the old uh, 1880s to 1930s these used to run. Can't really see very well inside because it's quite, quite dark in there. So there's some ambient noises. We've got a Pullman coach as well. I need to mark, mark two Pullman coaches. <laughs> uh, well, we'll look in the travelling post office in a minute. Staff is very friendly here. Literally just had to go and ask. Uh, oh, it's got it all stacked out so you could have uh, so you can have a snack on there. Yeah, we start to ask the staff if we've got a couple of pound coins so we could uh, have a go at pressing the coin. They're very helpful stuff here at the Railway Museum. Here we've got a uh, London South East bench, self service ticket machine, old uh, confectionery. What's this? You've got some uh, Nestle chocolate. Let's see how much it is. See if it's a damn sight. I bet it's about oh, 30, 30p for a Milky Bar. I wish there was still 30p. I do. Ain't 30p now, about 30 quid. Yeah, I'll say, you can just see inside here in the Mark II Pullman coach. Pullman's like the luxury coaches. Not a very luxury seat in, do they? <laughs> Plus, been budget cuts. And our Class 87 uh, electric at the front. Have a look, of Look in. Start to fall out of train. That's how we got a baggage, baggage cart there. That's like class 87 here, diesel electric. Eh, not diesel electric, electric, Boris Scott. Uh, I've got one of these in model form. Um, I can't remember what I've got there, but I've got the um, uh, light blue. It's just still run. And so I'll have a quick look outside in a minute. There's some bits and bobs outside, the small miniature railway out in the south yard. Yeah. There's still some of these plodding up and down the west coast main line, not many now. The 90s took these over. There it is. The freight liner has still got a few plodding up and down. They have. And we've got a couple of small little shunters down here. And some more wagons. All wagons, I'll say. We'll go out in, there, in the shed in a minute. You can tell this is fairly uh, recent. It's still got the uh, the newer style warning, which didn't come around until the uh, mid 90s. It's there. Weight's 80 ton, brake force is 40 ton, maximum speed 110. Stevenson, I'm sure it has a different name on the other side. <laughs> 87 double A one on this side, Stevenson. What is it on the other side? <laughs> Let's have a quick look, I'm sure it's got a different number. What's well, Royal Scott on this side? I oh, know it is double A one. It's Royal Scott this side and Gladstone the other. Hey, that's just to confuse you, that's to see if you're on your toes. <laughs> little LMS shunter. I say it's well worth a day out. It is. So I say when you're modelling as well, these little uh, coal hoppers here, 
they're only sort of that big which is what was about three inches if that even they're quite big 12 ton coal hopper uh, coal wagon how many planks is it it's how you measure your um your coal wagons in planks you got one two three four five six seven so that's a seven plank uh, coal wagon that is that's how you uh, test them not test them sorry how you uh, work out what size they are quite a nice sort of view here underneath of a mark too so you've got your wooden running boards there your bogey suspension air tanks you have your uh, uh, I would say you taught retention tanks, but these just used to used to have a crack and it used to go on the floor in between the uh, in between the um, rails. It plastered atomized if you took a shit in one of these. Yeah, some of the old uh, wagons, some of the old awesome carts, some of the old British rail trucks that used to do all the uh, moving around for them. Yeah. Here's the buffers. Big lumps of cast iron they are, they ain't gonna move very far in a hurry. Got a small little uh, saddle tank here. Anyone familiar with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine will probably recognise this. Uh, actually no, I was about to say duck, but it's not a duck is it? Duck's a pannier, this is a saddle tank. So no 6 -0. Saddle tank, saddle tank, because the water tank sits over it. A pannier has got it bolted on either side like a motorbike, and the girlfriend wants a picture next to it. She does, and she feels really small. This is a small loco. This isn't big. Yeah, it's quite. You're only on a platform. Bear in mind, platforms are at that sort of height. You forget there's like another three, four foot of train underneath the platform. You do. Yeah, you're gonna get your leg out, I do. Yeah, here's a milk tank. These were glass on, these were. Keep them fresh. Obviously, because it was glass, you had to shunt with care. Yeah, these were used to keep your milk in when they're traveling, traveling around the country. And a couple more wagons. Got a gas, gas van here, brake van. I'll say I'll take a, what's it? What around outside, got a banana van there. Take your bananas in, I can't be a nice juicy banana. You can't. Obviously these are three um three link couplings, no not three link, I'm talking about instantaneous couplings, I think they are. There, that was an instantaneous. I can't that's a screw coupling, so screw coupling there, so you've got the big screw to tighten it up. Instantaneous or something like that coupling, so you could either have it short or cool, so I might focus there, sorry. So you can have it short or long, you've got the two, sorry, screw coupling, then you've got the standard three link, which is basically that, that, with another link in the middle of it, and that'll be classed as a three link coupling. So there's your different sort of couplings, a lot of use Buckeye now, they do, most like the Americans, about threes are all Buckeye, oh dear, I'm tripping over the rails there, I don't know if I'm going to come over this side, but I don't give a crap. <laughs> there's the old vacuum hoses that go together. Right, we'll take a toddle back up this way, we'll go out in the yard and uh, we'll take some videos out in the yard. Right, so we've actually come outside into the depot now. Every time I've been to the railway museum, you've never actually been able to get in here. But I've just placed something very interesting over the right hand side, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Obviously, we've got a DMU here. I think it's a 101. Let's see, it's got speed whiskers on the front of it. I'm sure it's a 101. It's 101, 103, something like that. First generation DMUs take over from uh, the steam trains so you got it in green here and the back end it's in BR blue because it lasted for years these the 150s took over these eventually they did yeah the interesting thing on the right hand side is Prince William um, EWS well it was BR EWS took over it was one of the uh, royal trains so you have Prince William Prince Henry the 247s, got the uh, Royal Crestal on the front. These got took over by a pair of uh, 67s, um, was it? I can't remember which ones they were now. Can tell it's fired up recently because there's a big soot stain on the uh, ceiling. But yeah, 47798. Let's say 67, I can't remember what they are now. I think Royal, Royal Sovereign and one's Royal Diamond. I've got one of them. Yeah, this, these are the ones you can get in the shop. It's 
quite nice. If I'd have brought that uh, 90 yesterday, I'd be buying one of these. <laughs> and we've got an 08 in front of it. Like I say, I've, it's been years since I've actually been out again. It used to have a 37 parts up on the middle row. It's quite nice if you want to do a bit of weathering. Let's have a bit of a shot of that, just so you can see what it looks like with all the oil oil staining on. Yeah, so looks like a nice little, what's it on? The EWS um, donated this to the uh, National Railway Museum. This one's been put back more into its um, BR days with the branding on the side of it. But yeah, it's quite nice to be able to see that. I'm hoping I've got enough battery on this. <laughs> I just noticed my battery's running very low, very quickly, because we've done a lot of filming here today. And I thought I've got plenty of battery. So yeah, weightage of this, 119 tonne. That's 47.7. So yeah, I say you can buy these in the gift shop at the NM, uh, NRM. So I hope you get one at some point. The Edward version. I think it's Henry, the Edward version. That's available. So it's got its uh, BR, but, um, BR badge. Oh, I'm talking absolute junk here. Uh, the uh, ER2 crest on it. So yeah, a bit dirty, but <laughs> we'll deal with that. Actually, it's quite nice for weathering your underframes, all in the middle. As you see, it's quite a nice, it's like a very orangey colour. I'll have to take note of that for weathering some of our logos. Yeah, the OI is quite clean, actually. So, yeah, like I just a little uh, video there in the depot. Right, we're back in the uh, great. Uh, hall now. Uh, it's about half hour before the uh, turntable spins. So just come a quick look at the uh, last few bits and bobs in here. We'll have a look at the model railway section in a minute. But yeah, I'd say this is one of the only bullet trains outside of Japan. In fact, it is the only bullet train that's outside of Japan. Here it is. So I say we were messing about with steam trains. I'm pretty sure the Japanese have got these sort of things going. We can get a high view over there in a minute. There's lots of it. A lot of Japanese tourists here today. Got the motorman, no admission. Smells like the 760s. Right, sorry for the audio change folks, um, my camera's actually run out of battery, so I'm having to use uh, my mobile. I oh, am, yeah, so there's only a few bits and bobs we could have a look at left here, so I'll say I've completely run out of battery. I thought I had enough uh, last night, but clearly I didn't. So we've got some more name badges up there, let's have a quick look at the uh, model railway, not so gauge model railway in here. So there's a couple more little locos we need to come and have a look at. Class 20 in here, a Chinese, I think it's Chinese loco we need to have a look at as well. I'll say I thought I'd got enough battery on my phone, but um, on my phone, on my uh, camera, but clearly not. <laughs> got a quick uh, look up here at this Chinese loco up here. I'll say I'll come back in here so we'll get a picture of the uh, turntable room, just to see the uh, Pullman train over there, Topaz. Let's take a wonder up here. The sheer size of this one compared to a British Loco is quite astounding, really. This one's huge. Interesting fact, it's actually built in Britain, this was. Yeah, we can just see the sheer size of it. It's massive. Yeah, 
that electric motor car there. Down that side. Oh, have a quick pot down to the class 20. And I'll say then we'll wait to uh, what's the time table, uh, time table turntable go around. So it goes around at half past three. It's around twice a day today. It's half past eleven and half past three. Here we've got a Sulzer engine. In the 60s, I think these were in the 27s. Oh, 24s and 24s. Looks close to 27s. Here we've got a class 20. Little small loco. DRS have got a few of these. Brand new. Well, not brand new, but they've done them up with bigger range tanks on them. They're all sort of getting retired slowly. They are. Oh, excuse me. I'm to have a yawn. Well, not most diesels. This has only got a cab one end. Quite different. And so we'll watch this turn. Turn so we'll go around in a bit. Got a quick look at the front of the... Uh, Chinese loco. Like I say this was built in this country and exported to China. Largest loco in the collection here at um, York. And I'd say the biggest exported loco we ever built in the UK. So yeah, I'll say we'll hang around here and wait for the turntable to start moving. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the turntable demonstration this afternoon. For those of you that can see me, the good, the good news is you won't have to look at my ugly microphone for the next five or six minutes. Uh, you will still be able to hear me, I'll be the other side of this locomotive, because there are speakers positioned along the side of the turntable. So what I would like you to do is give us a big cheer. Hey! Uh, you can do better than that. Say a big cheer. Good afternoon to everybody on this side. I'm sure you lot can give a better cheer than that lot. Okay. Well, welcome to you all. My name's Ian. I'm one of the explainers here at the Railway Museum. I'm accompanied today by my colleague Peter. I'm a parent and turn to them. We're going to give Peter a wave. Peter gets to do the exciting bit and drive the turntable around. And what I'm going to do is to introduce you to the turntable. Why do we have it? So the first thing I have to say to you is, this has always been the great ball of the Railway Museum. From 1878 through until 1967, this was a very active, extremely busy engine show. 1914, 722 men and boys were working on this depot. When this turntable was installed in 1954, it says on the block in front of me, 169 steam locomotives allocated to this depot in York. So, extremely busy time. 1958 59, there are over 2,000 men actually working on this depot. To facilitate that, there used to be four turntables here. Uh, number one and number two used to be been in the collection store today. That's the former warehouse, uh, was named years ago. And that is the former diesel running depot, which was built in 1957. And in building that, they got rid of number one and number two turntables, and sadly, they were consigned to history. When this partially new roof was put on in the early 1990s, number three table, we looked down behind the Pullman, down here, and behind uh, where Eurostar is parked, we look at the pattern in the floor, You'll see where our number three turns that we used to be. When this posh new roof was on, sadly it was lifted out, but it wasn't destroyed. It now lives at Pickering, up on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, still doing a job of work up there. This particular turntable is number four turntable of number four shed, and it was one of the biggest turntables you would have seen in the United Kingdom, some 70 feet long 
one end to the other, which is 21 and a half meters in new money. Now turntables themselves come in two main types, balance and non-balance. The balance table is a bit like a giant seesaw that goes round and round. So the skill of the driver is to bring the engine on, the turntable, feel the point of balance, apply the brakes on the engine, then the driver and the fireman step down from the locomotive, driver to one end, fireman to the other, and will physically push the turntable around. Two manpower, I think. Golly, what a tough job. But actually, you've got it right on the point of balance, it will go around really easily, to such an extent that it can be blown around by the wind. Now, if you know your stories about that famous little blue engine, about his mate, the red one, and he went to the up seaside one day on the island, went on the turntable, the wind got up, and spun him around like a spinning top, and he got really dizzy. Well, it's a true story, uh, based on the turntable up in Garsdale, up on the high Pennines, that was the spinning turntable that alluded to the story. So, this particular turntable is non-balanced, the weight is taken on the pivot below my feet, each end of the turf we have four big wheels, you can see poking out there, which run round the rail in the bottom of the pit there. It doesn't matter where we position the engines on this particular turntable. And this one, because it's lived indoors, all its working life, just in front of Peter there we have some orange boxes, which alludes to the fact that this is an electrically powered turntable. So we can revolve the turntable 360 degrees, Using the electricity taking about 90 seconds, about a minute, a minute and a half to do a full turn. However, you know electrics can fail. So we have a backup system. Today that's called Peter, right? With that wacky great big ammo there in front of him. Now I physically have wound this turntable all the way around by hand with a locomotive on. Yes, it did look like a beetroot. Yes, I did have to go and have a sit down for a while afterwards. It took me about 20 minutes on my own. So, you don't yeah, need to by the way. Okay, it's a good workout, believe me. I felt afraid. So, hopefully, later on, the electric will click in and Peter will show us a little bit of hand winding towards the end of the demonstration. To make quite rightly ask why you need to turn the table. Well, what we have here in the old days will be known as a roundhouse, even though the building was square, we have 24 tracks radiating up like the spokes of a bicycle wheel with the central half of the turntable. So there's 24 on the wall over there, and they store 21 engines. Tracks 4 and 5 out through the glass doors, across up what's now our car park, through the gates to the end, through the sidings. Even today we are connected to the East Coast main line. Still bring vehicles in off the main line if we need to into the old depot as it used to be. Track 17 would be left clear under the gantry down to number three turns of course the gantry was never here uh, years ago and the roof was a lot lower of course. So simply house line up track five, engine on, secure the engine, brakes on, unlock the table, swing around from the empty track, lock in the engine away, service it through, carry up any repairs, prepare it for its next duty. Pull an engine out, swing around to the right track, lock in, engine on, brakes on the engine, unlock, swing around to the engine that's facing the right way it needs to go, round to track four, lock in, engine away. Very quick, very easy method of storing and retrieving the engines. The alternative to that was to come on shift at dark o'clock in the morning, and your engine right in the middle of a long line of locomotives, so you get your one ready, and you're ready to move. All these locomotives are lined up in front of you, so you call up a shunter, and those ones out, and your one out, and shunt the other ones back in, and dine them. So roundhouses became quite common. And the other reason for turntables is this wonderful locomotive behind me. This is the famous Sterling Single, built in 1870. Victoria had 31 years to go before she passed away when this was built. And this is classically Passenger Express of that era. So 
uh, predominantly in the end will work Chimney first, towards the signal gantry there. The crew, the driver and the farm will have a clear view of the track, clear view of the signals, all the control will lay down in front of the driver, and we have the cab for the inclement weather. Now mechanically, the engines can work just as well as the tender first towards the windows, as well as chimney first. You know this because the central engine is very useful and it can go just as fast backwards and forwards, yes? So, a few Christmases ago in York, it was minus 18 Celsius. Hell's teeth, it wasn't half cold. Yeah. So, if you're going tender first, you can see there are two components that don't like going tender first, but it's cold. Driver and fireman. You've lost any protection from the cab, so anything falling over the sky, you're going to catch it. Rain, snow, sleet, fog, hail. You're going to be soaked. But of course, the fireman's in behind you, so you're going to be warm on one side, freezing cold on the other side. You're also looking around your heat of coal, looking for your signals. By looking this way, towards the windows, you're basically away from the locomotive control. So you're constantly turning all the time. Nine of Of course, this did lead to accidents. So you'd think, well, now we have a nice day outside, you think everything in the garden is lovely? No. Slim stream up over the back of the tender, the coal's dried out, picks up all the dust and rubbish from the coal, and fires that in your face. So if you're not cold, wet and cheese off, you're filthy black and cheese off, the coal dust up your nose, in your ears, down your throat. It's like chewing on nutty slack dust. It's awful. It doesn't clean your teeth either. It's a nightmare. So, turntables, not only busy depots like this, the busy junctions, and also the other branch lines to allow the engines to work up the branch, get to the end, engine to the turntable, turn around, come back around the train, tie on, and work back home, working chimney first. You can quite rightly ask the question, why don't you see turntables nowadays? Well, you watch the trains go past us outside, and you'll see Trains pull in, passengers get off, driver shuts the cab down in the far end, gets out, locks it up, walks the length of the train, opens the door, gets it in the other end, and drives off. Why do you need a turntable? Well, you don't, do you? So, these, where there were hundreds, there's only 30 left in the whole of the UK. Now, fair warning, you go hunting for turntables, this is the only one that isn't on railway property. So if you go hunting for turntables and you get caught, you'll get busted for trespass, you'll end up in court having to pay a thousand pound fine for trespass on the railway. So do please be careful. Come to the railway museum, apparently it's free to get in. And also you can watch the turntable for free and not get nicked. Okay, so we're gonna unwrap and unlock the turntable. That big lever there. Now a big clock. Good you know, we're ready to move. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we have 120 tons of metal which is going to come past you. We cannot do an emergency stop. We have brakes, we can't stop 120 tons on the sixpence, okay? So if you listen to me, because this is important. Like that all of you please to take half a pace back off the barriers. Please make sure for those of you with little ones, nothing on the barriers, please. Arms, legs, coats, cameras, bags. Okay. As we come past you, do please give us a wave. A big cheesy grin. Okay, we can't do high fives, okay, because we might get tangled up. It would be terrible. So we do a quick check and then we'll move off. Thank you very much.
Peter switched the uh, power off and just drifting under the momentum of the turntable. That's the power just switching off. All Peter's going to do is overshot the marks quite deliberately to show a little bit of hand winding. So engaging the hand winding uh, gear. The wind back into track four, about a track and a half. My job is to lock the turntable in when the rails line up. Makes it look very easy. Okay, we do not need gym membership. Just come and wind this turntable a couple of times and we fit as a fleet. So nearly there. Right folks, that's about it from uh, the National Railway Museum in York today. Hope you've enjoyed this, vi this uh, vlog. Don't forget to like, subscribe and stick a comment in the comment section. See you later guys.